Hello, welcome to a new video. Today's video, we are going to do a Let's Talk About um, video. And um, in, let's, in the Let's Talk About series of videos, what I do is I, I buy and paint um, to try and to review so that you don't have to spend money to buy and try yourself, okay? So if you have any kind of test you want me to put the paint through, do let me know. But here are the basic tests that I would actually do when I get a new paint pigment. Okay, I think it has been a while since I've done this um, and um, yeah, it's good to kind of just do this because I really, really have a lot of paint. So anyway, the um, subject of uh, interest today is uh, this colour from Schmincke Horridum Aquarel. Um, and the name of this paint can be kind of, kind of confusing for people who hear it. So it's in Tico Red. So remember we have this um, colour called Indigo. So if you go to a shop and you tell them Intico, they're going to kind of think that you mean indigo, which was what happened to me. So remember to call to mention the red behind. It's a new pigment, uh, recently produced. We all know about the uh, discovery of it in blue several years back. Um, and it was like discovered by some scientists in Oregon. Um, and then they started to like experiment with different ingredients. And then it found like they, this is like one of the first pigments that they, they discovered. So I'm, I'm pretty... I'm um, excited to see what other pigments they might come up with but this is the first one it's granulating red um, and it's supposed to have a little bit of a potter's pink and a little bit of like a pink pinkier a hue more blue leaning red so I don't even think it has a pigment number yet so the reason why it's called Intigo is because um, it is made up of four uh, metals yttrium and then IN here means indium Ti is titanium and Co is cobalt. We are we all know cobalt and titanium being used in pigments, um, but indium and yttrium they are not. I mean, this is probably the other one. I will kind of point to you um, a, a link to the other pigments, Yinming Blue. So uh, yeah, go and um, check out that video that I made about Yinming Blue. So this is in Tico Red, and um, this right here it's a limited edition color i'm not exactly sure if it's limited edition but i got it and it cost a bomb to get this one it's 28 dollars for 5 mil tube which is about the same as in main blue yeah but i'm quite surprised how fast it came out because i know in main blue we all know about that pigment um, from some sort of a kind of a general news and it took a while before it actually translated into a paint but this one just came out like like wham like like that so I really don't know um, how that whole process goes so in today's video I'm just I'm just gonna swatch it um, as usual like let's talk about kind of style the color is quite pastel pink if if you can see it's kind of a pastel pink color it, it is it looks kind of opaque like if you show me this um, I'm gonna just think that it's a it's a kind of a pastel color. So you can already see that it's highly granulating. Okay, already done the line, so that we can test out the opacity later on. So this is how it swatches at kind of a thicker concentration. It's kind of streaky when you paint it though. Bit of more water at the end so you can kind of see the graduation from like kind of a thicker mixture to a thinner thinner mixture so i'm just gonna show you how the flow is like on the uh, pigment in water test so i'm just going to drop in some of these just just let you see how how it looks so this is how it the, the pigment behaves and then we will have this standard test where I drop water as well into a painted area just to see if there is any difference um, in that uh, whether it will cause any bloom uh, in the in the paint uh, in the in the painted area. We've already done um, the gradient test, and you can see the big particles at the top, and then it goes down uh, to the bottom, um, and you see that that nice granulation. And over here, we do have the, the, the line that's drawn before we swatch it. And I'm going to do another line that's like after we swatch. So this is like two, this is one. So one means before and two means after. And as you can see from the lines, I'm not sure if you can see it very closely. I'm just kind of try to bring it closer. Um, as you can see from here, 
you do see that that might be slight, very slight uh, covering of that line. So it's showing that it's slightly like kind of semi opaque. I think especially like like here, there's a bit of that like um, lines that's underneath being covered uh, by by this watercolor. Um, so I think it's kind of semi. Which is over here, if you look at the pigment information that's on the sleeve of the paint, it says that it's semi-transparent. So as you can see, it's not completely transparent. You do see some coverage or covering of fine lines. Uh, I don't think it's a big issue. It's not opaque, so it's still not that bad. Um, and then um, regarding uh, the... Uh, this is the light fastness. It has five stars on the light fastness. Uh, but I don't. I have not tested it on on the like, using the light fastness test, so I can't really comment on it. Just to accept um, their recommendation or their their explanation uh, with uh, full faith. Um, yeah, but I read or I found that this color is actually very light fast. Um, as as kind of a, it's kind of the, the 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 highlight of this color. And then um, regarding uh, the staining, it says here like like it's not staining. Um, demarcated by demarcated by the open triangle so I'm just going to try to do some sort of removal uh, by adding water and having that brush just go through and trying to like see if it's really difficult to scrub off the colors um, I think it's semi uh, it's not as difficult but I can remove quite a lot of it um, substantial especially like here um, staining i think i'll just have to write there like moderate okay to low um and let's just see if i can kind of like um kind of layer okay so this is putting another layer on yeah it does not come out and uh you can kind of build on it so this is like kind of the layer you can actually build on the color um and yeah giving it like making it look a little bit more concentrated let's look at the similar colors i think this is a, a question that everybody has like when they see a new pigment and whether they should get it is are there similar ones and do i actually need this one um so there are a few that i found that are pretty close so i'm just gonna kind of show you here over here so we do have potter's pink right potter's pink is it's, it's also very it's also a very granulating color so some people do have problem with this one because they find the potter's pink being very faint the color is very soft um, and um, the difference that I see especially in the color tone is that the potter's pink is more yellow leaning um, and this one is more blue um, and then um, we do have very close two colors that are pretty close they are the ultramarine pink so they actually one color but I do have two uh, different brands one is from Ramon Small and one is from Old Holland and these two colors are from PR259 which are the ultramarine pinks and it, it, it as you can see ultramarine pink is also a granulating pigment and the color is slightly different in that um, the ultramarine pink I think it's even more blue leaning than than the intico so we'll see um, yeah, I, I guess if you want something that is very yellow leaning, you get the polished pink. If you want something that's really blue, you get ultramarine pink. You want it in the middle, you get a yin tickle red. Um, and there is this one that is very, that I think most people have this and they kind of like, this is the representative color when they think about this kind of color, uh, this tone, like a magenta pink color. And that is the quinacodone rose. This is the Daniel Smith one. The only difference, the only um, difference with from this with this from the rest is that this is non-granulating so if you want a non-granulating version yeah you get this one you use this one you want a granulating version you use these others so let's talk about the dupes um, for the color you can mix um, very obviously Potter's pink because it's very yellow and then the ultramarine pink which is very blue um, to kind of get this color so this is what I have. I can't say it's a hundred percent dupe, like for because as you can see, the pigment, um, the the granulation for the dupe is like the Potter's pink. Uh, it's it's from Potter's pink, so it's actually more yellow. But the overall looks a little bit like um, less. It's like more magenta. So I I would say if you do have these two, you can mix to get this one. So there's no need for you to get um, the Yintico red. Um, and you can also try like making a kind of a, a mixture uh, where it's super separating by having this color, the Queen Rose, with like the Potter's Pink and then you get something a little bit more 
uh, separating. This segment, um, I will test out how this color looks uh, when mixed with other colors. Um, and I am going to try out as, uh, a good 12 colors, um, which are from the uh, color wheel. Um, and the first up, first up is like kind of a, kind of a, a cool yellow, okay? So this is, I'm actually just adding the color in, just bit by bit, just to see um, if there is any change in the color, how it would change the color um, of this uh, pigment. So it becomes like a nice, as you can see over there, it becomes a very nice, um, beautiful brown color. Okay, I'm not sure if it gets orangey, but I think it becomes like a kind of a quinacridone. Um, quite a nice color over here. It's like a brown color. Um, and I think if you use a lot of it, you're just gonna get like a kind of a orangey. I think this is probably the thickest you can get. Like this one, this is kind of the thickest. So you do get like a range of like browns over here. So this is... Uh, just a medium tone uh, PY97. So this is the color. Not very different, slightly deeper, but not too different. Um, and then I'm just gonna add just a bit. So this one gets like brown, a little bit quicker. I think could be the concentration that I added in. Okay, you get a, I get a like deep, more like a deeper um, orange color. Very similar, I think. It's really, really very similar. The that color, and then I'm just gonna add the Yentico red to it. Okay, so it gets more and more. Um, I think it becomes more reddish, a little bit like coral color, like a coral red color. So can you see it gets like more red? And the end, you get this really nice, like red color. Like this is a orangey red. This is TPO. Uh, yeah, which is very close to the orange, I must say. But it's a red, medium red, uh, like a warm red color. Mm. Okay. So adding that in just makes it a little bit more red, like more middle red, with a bit of um, texture. So I think the more Intego you add, the more texture you get. And this one you can get like, a, you can bring it to middle red, which is pretty nice. This is a very strong red color, which I think it'd be very hard for the uh, this pigment to, to exert its um, feature, like its property. You do see like a bit of that red coming up, like the, the granulation, the pink coming up. That's, it's because I use quite a lot of the paint. Okay, the next one is a magenta color and I have this, uh, if I'm not wrong, PR122 over here. So this is PR122, which is this one. Okay, it's very nice pink color, like a queen, queen acridone rose color. So I think it probably does not do anything <laughs> other than make it more granulating. Yeah, very much so. And I have this dioxazine violet over here, which is very, very strong. The tinting strength is crazy. It does not give the other color a chance. Like you can only see it. So you have to be really careful how much you use. So be very, use it sparingly. So I'm adding the uh, Intico in. It makes it a little bit more gentle, magenta-ish color. So I'm just adding like a lot more and now it turns a bit more magenta. I'm actually quite liking this. It's quite beautiful. So it reminds me of the um, uh, like a cobalt violet color. And if we go into a uh, blue, so I'm gonna use ultramarine blue. So ultramarine blue, this is the this is the the typical one. It's not the red red shade. Okay, so it's a typical ultramarine blue. I think I will like this this combination. So let me just mix it together so you get like a nice kind of reddish ultramarine blue and then the more you add the more purple it's gonna be um, and i think i really quite like this one so just add a bit more to this and it's getting very very nice over here 
and here it's just like a wisteria color this one and i think if you do use it um, in a higher concentration you might even get like a super granulating like separating mixture which is beautiful so this is the color you got a nice purple color with ultramarine blue okay this is a phthalo blue or phthalo blue we call it so with this you actually do get like a nice kind of a like it becomes like a cobalt or like a um, ultramarine blue and then it will become a nice purple color in the end I think if you add more the, of the pink pigment so I think it will also it will also come you will also get a very beautiful uh, beautiful super granulating mixture a separation mixture with this color so this is this is quite a nice color okay with the um, phthalo blue okay and then we're gonna move on to a cobalt like a kind of a cobalt turquoise color cobalt tilt color so you can kind of just mix it like back and forth you know back and forth back and forth and you do get a bit of that gray over here and then if we add more of the indigo um, you're gonna get like a kind of a purple deep purple color like a violet but like kind of a grayish violet color so phthalo green is another of those like uh, strong um, tinting very high tinting strength color that you have to be really careful when you use because otherwise it's going to take over your whole painting I'm just gonna add I'm adding I'm kind of looking forward to how that interaction will look the mixing because I think it will be quite nice like you, you will get a, like a nice uh, kind of a um, grayish color with, with the mixture so can you see you get a kind of an indigo um, color not very strong let me try to add a bit more so you get like a you can end up looking like a kind of a purple so this is uh, green gold so it becomes like a because it's kind of like yellow um, yellow green so you get like I think like a brown like an umber color I think so this is you get like a brown color with this word with this mixture here are the 12 colors and as you can see from here we see a lot of browns and um, like, like a deep red color like um, and we also do get a lot tons of purple color some grayish color with the greens and the, the, with the with the cobalt turquoise I mean with the cobalt too over here let's examine how we can use this color uh, in the sketch the tintin strength is really really low um, the granulation is nice though so especially like over here you can see the granulation uh, like here and over here the granulation is very very strong um, but it is not that bright so if you're looking for really really bright red like pink color you have to use a, a quinacridone a rose which is over here so these are the color this is the color um, that's made by quinacridone rose and this is the color made by Ian Tico uh, red which is I mean pales in comparison and then um, here are the mixtures that I mixed with uh, ultramarine blue and then some of these are the colors that I got when mixed with um, a yellow so um, I mean all in all like in summary I think um, I do not think you really need to get this color it's very expensive it's kind of a novelty because it's a new pigment new element um, yeah special new pigment um, but you can actually just mix your own there are the dupe formulation or formulas over here you can find if you do have it um, sure marine pink can be a bit hard to find but they're definitely around and they're not very expensive so can, and potter's pink is also around so if you want something like that you can actually do your own mixture and don't have to buy this one but if you love this color by all means buy it and if you don't feel like you want to mix all the time yeah by all means just buy it um very expensive um yeah okay so yeah i think i do hope that you you enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up if you and if you like to see similar content uh related to watercolors urban sketching pens uh, super the granulation uh, stuff like that uh, do remember to subscribe, to subscribe to my channel and uh, if you really like this video also give me a super thanks again okay? i'll really appreciate it thank you so much see you guys again next week bye